We have some breaking headlines from the Fed's John Williams. Steve Leisman, you see him. What do we know? What are we, let's, what are we hearing? We're hearing John, the New York Fed president, in his speech says that we are at or near the peak level of the target range for the federal funds rate. It's a touch dovish. It does leave open the possibility of another quarter, but also the possibility that it actually doesn't happen. He does go on to say, before you get too happy, that they need to maintain a restrictive stance, quote, for some time. Monetary policy he says it's going to take time to fully work through the economy and into inflation. That's a sign that he's on the camp that says, you know what, there are still lags to come from the hikes they've had already. Still have a ways to go, he says, to fully restore price stability. And there's that de rigueur comment from a Fed official. Inflation, he says, is still too high. Supply chain bottlenecks, though, have improved dramatically. That has helped goods inflation, which is down sharply. Shelter and core services inflation, he says, is coming down gradually, and he expects further declines in that sector of the economy. So that's good news. Numerous signs, he says, the labor market is coming into balance, but he's not happy with it yet. He says further reductions in demand are needed to bring down uh, uh, to bring the, uh, the, balance, the labor market back into balance, which means lower GDP, less demand. He expects GDP next year to slow to one and a quarter. We're running north of two right now. Unemployment rates have rise to four percent. We're around 3.8. And he says he expects inflation to reach the two percent target in 2025. Scott, a pretty good number this morning on the PCE. The market liked it a bit, a little bit of a decline in the outlook for the funds for that extra quarter point this year, still running about 33, 34 percent. And it did give the bond market a bit of a breather after a pretty serious run the last several days. Scott? Yeah, yeah, good point, Steve. Uh, no big surprises, I guess, uh, from, from uh, Mr. Williams. Steve, thank you, our senior economics reporter. Let's bring in our senior markets commentator, Mike Santoli now. Um, all right, so September, get out of here, right? We, we all agree with that. Like, and don't come back. But what now? That's all that matters. I'm sorry, were you talking to me? <laughs> um, no, I mean, what, what matters now is, in part, I do think that the, the, the process of the bond market sort of calming down to a fair degree. You know, uh, Williams here with these headlines, it's pretty much as expected. As Steve said, slightly more dovish. And I think that's probably part of the, uh, the ingredients, too, for what the market might need to stabilize. Big question I've been asking is, has enough work been done on the downside to get those expectations for the economy and for earnings back into line with what reality is likely to be? I think as long as we have the economic numbers coming in, we'll be happy to be able to play off of those as opposed to sort of this really uh, unanchored, violent move uh, in bond yields. We'll see if that can continue. Yeah, yields are going to be critical, and then, and then earnings. And, yeah. you know, they'll start soon. The banks, I'm not sure what kind of a story they're going to tell. Maybe not the best one. Um, but we really got to wait for mega cap tech, and then that's a few weeks away. Yeah, and I also feel as if it's it's more just the market uh, usually finds some relief in its ability to look company by company and trade the winners versus the losers, as opposed to you know staying in this macro uh, sort of wind tunnel where all you have is who's moving the bonds this fast, why is oil still going up when it's not about demand, and so we'll see if we get any uh, any a break from those dynamics. All right, I'll see you in a couple hours yeah. on closing bell. It's Mike Santoli.